Hi, this is Colin from Dexmat. What we're showing here is a 12 volt car headlight that's suspended from and also powered by two sections of our 500 micrometer diameter carbon nanotube yarn that's insulated with some heat shrink tubing. We're passing 2.1 amps of current through this yarn to light the lamp, but you may be wondering how much current a yarn like this can sustain. Of course, there isn't a simple answer to that question since failure current depends on the environment that a conductor is in. But we can at least make a comparison between the performance of CNT yarn and the performance of other materials such as copper if we use the same test apparatus in the same environment. Here we have a sample of that same 500 micrometer carbon nanotube yarn, this time without the insulation, hooked up to a DC power supply with about 20 centimeters of yarn suspended in air between these inner steel contacts. We start off with 2.1 amps of current going through the yarn, and as you can see, the voltage level is stable. This is a current that the yarn can sustain for a long time without degrading. I'll now increase the current until we find the value at which this length of yarn in this apparatus and this environment will begin to fail. I'll increase the current by about 100 milliamps or 200 milliamps at a time. As you can see, the voltage increases every time I increase the current, but then remains stable, at least for the first few steps. There are some fluctuations due to air currents. That changes once we reach 3.1 amps. At this current, you can see that the voltage is increasing on its own, even though the current value is stable. This is because the yarn has reached a critical temperature at which it's begun to, to, to degrade and its resistance is increasing. This leads to a runaway heating effect, and so in a moment, we'll see that the, that the fiber develops a hot spot and eventually will burn out. If you watch uh, very shortly, the, current, the fiber will begin to glow red and that will increase until it burns out. There we go. And there, done. As a comparison, this is what happens when we test a piece of copper wire using the same setup, the same length, and the same electrical contacts. This copper wire is much thinner than our carbon nanotube yarn was, but it's denser, so all total, this wire is about 50% heavier than that 500 micron CNT yarn. One of the differences you can see in this test is that the copper wire expands considerably when heated, which the CNT yarn doesn't. So this copper wire starts out in tension and then it begins to sag between the contacts as the wire gets longer. As the copper heats up, it also um, eventually oxidizes in air and becomes tarnished and hard to see until the point where it reaches the temperature where it begins to give off light and glow a bit. Uh, this wire sustained a, a current up to around 4 amps, and then at 4 amps you can see the voltage starts to rise uncontrollably on its own, and the wire enters a runaway heating cycle, finally reaches a temperature at which the copper melts and the wire breaks. This wire sustained a total about 30% more current than our 500 micron CNT yarn, but again it was about 50% heavier, so on a per mass basis the CNT yarn has slightly better performance. The precise mechanism of failure for our CNT yarn has to do with what's inside it. Our conductive carbon nanotube materials contain a dopant that increases their conductivity, but this dopant can be evaporated out of the material once it's heated above a certain temperature, around 150 degrees or 200 degrees Celsius. Each time we increase the electric current, we are increasing the temperature of the yarn by increasing the amount of heat produced by that current. Eventually, a current will be reached at which the temperature in part of the yarn is 150, de 150 degrees or higher, at which point that portion of the yarn will begin to lose dopant and increase in resistance, which increases the temperature further, leading to a runaway heating effect. Once that hot spot reaches 500 or 600 degrees in air, the carbon nanotubes at that spot will burn and the yarn will break. The copper wire can actually sustain a higher temperature without beginning to degrade. So the reason that the CNT yarn performs relatively well compared to copper with the same linear mass is that the CNT yarn is much better at dissipating heat away from those hot spots. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. To learn more about our conductive carbon nanotube yarns and tapes, please visit us at dexmat.com.